All right, thanks, thanks for being here today. Um, it's gonna be a nice, short, sweet, quick talk about just some of the latest ideas in, uh, in integrative medicine and vaccination. Um, I'm gonna try to chat a little bit about what's going on uh, maybe in, in, in my life and in, in vaccines in California. Um, and hopefully you guys can, uh, can walk away with some, uh, some ideas about you know, everything, you need, everything you as an integrative practitioner need to know about the current issues and controversies in vaccinations. Uh, raise your hand if, if you are not in California practicing. Okay, so good, so most of you, right, right. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't need to tell you the, you know, the complex nature of integrative medicine and what's involved in what you do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, the, you deal with the, the GI system, the immune system, the nervous system, um, nutrition. There's so many different aspects to what you do. But I, I think almost everything you do centers very largely around the immune system. And uh, is, it, you know, is, it, uh, is it too allergic? Is it too autoimmune? Is it too, uh, too depressed? Um, or is it perfectly healthy? And I think a lot of what, what we all do as integrated practitioners is do everything we can do to, help, to make sure that immune system is working as best as it can for our patients, and that's the key. And I know you go through the, you know, the, the gut is a large part of that as we're learning. Um, <clears throat> so in, in pediatrics, raise your hand if you, if you practice in the, in, with children, all right? So good, a lot of you, yeah, yeah. So I, all I do is pediatrics, I don't, I don't treat grownups. Um, you know, if someone has chest pain, I start to freak out a little bit, I don't, don't know what to do, unless they're a, a, a anxious teenager, I guess. But um, uh, in pediatrics, I don't think there's anything in the, in the field of pediatrics that uh, influences the immune system any more than vaccination does. I mean, kids will get sick and their immune system will deal with that. They're, they may have poor nutrition, their immune system will be very low. But, but vaccination, you know, the 70 doses of immunization that we give to children today, if you were to get every vaccine on the schedule, I mean, nothing else impacts the, the, the immune system. Uh, you know, in, in a, in a, whether it's a positive way, a negative way, a neutral way, vaccines by far are the biggest uh, thing that, that will influence children's health. And so then you as integrative practitioners, if vaccination plays a role in someone's autoimmunity or, or their gut health, you're, you are then dealing with that. And so I think it's very critical as a, as a practitioner that you, uh, you know, that you understand vaccinations and, and how they work and what you can maybe do to help keep kids uh, who are vaccinating uh, you know, healthy. Um, ra raise your hand, I'm actually curious. Raise your hand if you actually, uh, well, let me say, raise your hand if you don't administer vaccinations as, as part of your practice. Okay, so, so actually uh, a very large majority of, do, of you do administer vaccinations. Um, uh, excellent, so, um, <clears throat> so you know, what's, what's happening in California, and I think what really led to PIC uh, being formed is, as you all know, or maybe you don't know, maybe this is news to you, they passed a law that made uh, vaccinations, about half of the vaccinations on our CDC schedule, mandatory for school attendance and daycare attendance, public school, private school, religious schools, every school and daycare in California without exception the children are now required to get about half of the vaccinations. Hepatitis B, Hib, um, DTP, MMR, chickenpox, and polio. Um, and, uh, and again, with you know, no, no schools or daycares have a, a, an exception. So um, we're dealing with that now. And uh, West, Mississippi and West Virginia have already been that way for, for as long as I've been practicing. And New York is a little tough because they're very, very tough on, on their religious exemptions. But every other state is, is what I like to call a free state uh, in, you know, in, in, in the nation where people do have a choice. But you will more and more be finding out that your patients will have less of a choice in this issue as, as every year goes by. It, pretty much in almost every single state in the, in the whole country, there is legislation going on as we speak today that is trying to pass a law similar to California's. Whether they're gonna try it this year or next year or the year after, uh, they've, they've tried already in years past, they're gonna continue trying. Because again, in, in, in mainstream medicine, the idea that everything you can do to maximize vaccination rates is gonna have a beneficial effect on, on, on our, our healthcare system, on our patients, on everybody, 
And so if we can make them mandatory so everyone has to get them, everyone sees that as, as a very beneficial thing for a society. So if it's not in your state yet, it, it, it will be. And you might kind of feel like I, I feel you know, a little tied down now in this issue because most of my patients in my practice uh, uh, don't vaccinate because I'm one of the only pediatricians that will take people in Orange County who don't want to fully vaccinate. And, and I don't know if this is going on in your state, but every single, without exception, every single large pediatric group um, in South Orange County will not take patients anymore unless they 100% fully vaccinate on the CDC schedule on time. And they all have policies. So they all show up in my office. So I'm used to that. And it used to be a free choice. And now patients, now we're sitting there, they're saying, well, I, I didn't want to vaccinate, but, but you know, now I have to, um, to go to school. And it, it's, it's taken that freedom away. And if you, uh, part of you know, the mission of PIC is to help make sure people get informed consent. And so uh, we want to get you know, nationwide and have you know, people in every single state so that even though you might believe that vaccines are very positive, very beneficial for everybody, uh, but we also feel that, that people should get informed consent and that they shouldn't be mandatory for everybody. I kind of have this, this little feeling that, you know, uh, vaccination is perceived as such an amazing thing for a society, it's so good, but as soon as you force something, it instantly because it has this negative aspect to it. Now people start to think, well, if they're so good, why should they be forced? And then people start to ask, well, hey, why is the, why is the government forcing it? Why do, people, some, why do some people refuse vaccines? Um, is something going on that, that maybe I should investigate and learn? And now people, when they feel forced into it, they're more likely to investigate it. And they may start reading about some bad side effects. And then they might be actually less inclined to vaccinate because we've now made it an issue. Whereas I think, you know, years ago, it was kind of this quiet, free choice that everyone can kind of, you know, make or not make. Um, so, again, I, you know, if a lot of you, you know, the majority of the room here actually administers vaccines. And, uh, and again, you used to have the freedom to do it any way you wanted to. And, and again, that I, I foresee that is going to, that is going to, going to go away. Religious exemptions, personal exemptions. I mean, it boggles my mind that if you are part of a religion in California that doesn't utilize mainstream medical care and you, uh, and you include vaccination in that, you can no longer set foot in a school. Even if your, your religion has a school for itself in California, you, they, 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 they can't, you know, that, that's, that's gone by the wayside, which I, I think, I don't know, that's necessarily good for a society. Um, my main concern about vaccination is, is, is not so much individual vaccines, um, you know, I, I do find myself giving a lot of you know, vaccines one or two at a time in my office for patients that want them. And again, it's becoming more and more with the new law. But as you know, in integrative medicine, one size doesn't fit all. I, I mean, completely. I mean, if there's one thing you know is, is you are not following like a, a, a plan or protocol that you're just going to apply to every single patient in the exact same manner. Each one is an, is an individual. And, and I don't think anyone can scientifically claim that one size vaccine schedule is going to fit everybody uh, perfectly and is going to, going to be the, the best choice for them. Um, and where that comes into play in the issue of safety, and probably my number one concern is, is we don't have research that has verified the safety of the Centers for Disease Control complete immunization schedule. We don't have the safety research. So you'll, you'll say, well, wait, you know, Bob, vaccines are safe and effective. We all know they are safe and effective. Well, you have to ask yourself, what does that mean when you say vaccines are safe and effective? Scientifically, all, that you, all you can say scientifically is that they have passed the, F, the FDA safety approval process. And in, in some combinations, but not all combinations, and in a lot of times individually, they've passed uh, FDA safety approval. There have been a few studies along the way that might, might, look, might have looked at safety additionally, but you cannot scientifically say the CDC vaccine schedule has been researched and determined that it has long-term safety. Mm -hmm. And the Institute of Medicine, uh, probably, probably the, the, the most respected guide for all of our medical care in the United States and, and maybe even in the world, the Institute of Medicine, <clears throat> They examined this issue four years ago. 
they, they got together and they said, let's look at every single study that has proven the CDC vaccine schedule is safe. And they all got together empty handed at the end of all their endeavors. And they, they put out some statements regarding the CDC schedule that said, um, uh, I'll, I'll paraphrase, there is, there is uh, a, a paucity is the word they use. Uh, they also, also said in some cases there is no safety research looking at the long-term health outcomes of people on the CDC vaccine schedule. And so to me, that, that, that concerns me uh, g greatly. And as an integrative practitioner, I think that's probably the, the number one thing you can, you know, when your patients start asking about safety is, yeah, I mean, you, you might get a DTaP vaccine and then everything's gonna be fine. And you might do this vaccine or get, you might get an MMR vaccine and your patient has a fairly low chance of an adverse event. Um, but I can't show you safety data on the CDC schedule. And I think that's what, again, what PC, PI, uh, Physicians for Informed, for Informed Consent is about, is, is making sure people get that informed consent so they understand where the, where, uh, where the shortage of safety research is. Um, so as a practitioner, you know, what are you left with doing? I mean, you are going to be called upon by your patients to give your advice, help them sort through their schedules, help them figure out how to vaccinate. And, um, and then you might even be faced, uh, I mean, raise your hand if you're in California or West Virginia or Mississippi. I mean, you, you are faced talking to a family where they, it's not no longer about choosing if they can vaccinate, it's about, about how are they gonna go about vaccinating um, so they can meet school requirements. Um, uh, what I do a lot as, a, as a, you know, a pediatrician is I consult with families who have had a very severe adverse event after vaccination in their children. Um, and if a child has had a very severe adverse event, the, they wrote into the California law that you can consider their, their medical history and decide if more vaccines are not safe for that child. And then you can give them an exemption. And they also wrote into the law that if family members have had severe adverse events after vaccination, you can consider their family history and decide if you think more vaccines might not be safe for that child. Um, but here, here's, the, here's the, 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 big, the big but in this statement is um, uh, when they've looked at vaccination rates in schools um, and, and the number of children who are getting medical excuses to, to not vaccinate, that the medical excuses have gone way up in California, and, and, and the number of kids in, in schools that are getting vaccinations have, has also gone up, but it's not 100% like they anticipated. You know, the, the, the groups that got together that passed this law, they're, they're not satisfied with, with our lack of 100% vaccination rate in schools. And I firmly believe they are going to take away the family history vaccine medical exemption part of, of the law because they, they, they're trying to make it so people cannot opt out. And um, you should also know when they first created the law, there wasn't even an opt out. They didn't even have a way around it. Then they said, if you have a contraindication, which means if, you've, if you had a near death experience after vaccination, you could opt out. And then they changed that to mean if you just have medical circumstances that would allow you to opt out, that's how you can opt out. But again, um, as you know, you probably see a number of people have adverse events, moderate or severe adverse events, and they don't want to keep vaccinating. They don't want to vaccinate the next child. And um, uh, right now you can do that under California law, but I'm very confident they're going to try to take that away so that we can't do that. And the groups that are going around to all of your states, you know, the, the group that, that passed this law in California, they're traveling you know, uh, you know, to different states, helping to educate the doctors and the legislators there how to pass the same law. And you can bet they're gonna to try to pass it without a family history uh, allowance uh, for vaccine exemptions. They're gonna to try to, they might even try to pass it, pass it without medical circumstances that would allow someone to opt out. They're gonna to try to pass it with, based on contraindications. The state of Virginia tried to introduce it and the only opt-out was contraindication to vaccination uh, last year, and then that fell by the wayside, but they're gonna keep trying. So I think uh, as a group, I mean, I think it's fair to say that 
patients that come to integrative practitioners honestly are less likely to, to vaccinate their children or fully vaccinate their children than the general population who utilize uh, mainstream medicine. I don't know if anyone would argue with that. Uh, you are gonna be sitting in front of a lot of uh, non-vaccinating or under-vaccinating families. And if you, I think if you like the freedom of, uh, of talking to them without a law looming over your head, without feeling like, well, at the end of the day, we don't really have a choice because the law is the law. Uh, it's, it's somewhat you know, palatable now to practice this way because we have family history and medical circumstances. If they've had severe reactions, you can help them opt out. But again, we're not gonna have that five and 10 years from now unless we act unless you group together and, 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 you know, uh, and keep vaccines a free choice so that, so there's no negativity with it. Everyone can decide with their doctor. And again, I think that's the ultimate, uh, the ultimate, you know, wish, um, you know, the, the American Academy of Pediatrics of which I'm a member, um, and the American Medical Association also, of which I, I'm a member, um, both those organizations have published uh, their plans to eliminate all personal belief and religious exemptions to vaccination nationwide. That is one of their missions. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, as a group, uh, I'd definitely like to see more people band together to focus around this issue. I'm just going to chat real quick about PIC. You can read our mission up there as, as well as, as I can. But again, it's all about informed consent, understanding the pros and cons. Um, it's, it's very important to understand the risk you take if you don't vaccinate the risk of diseases, and then the risk, uh, the known side effects of vaccination. And we had a, a meeting um, earlier this year. Uh, you can check out videos at our website. Um, one thing you'll see on your tables, I love this. This is, uh, you ever see that the CDC vaccine information statements where they say, here's the vaccine, here's everything it does, here's the disease, here's all, all the stats about the disease. PIC generated their own version utilizing a, a broader range of, of data and a broader range of studies that I think gives a, 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 a different look at, at what is measles and what is the MMR vaccine and understanding the pros and cons. I, you know, take it with you. Uh, and we'll be putting those out for every vaccine eventually. Um, they're very time consuming to put together and the team that does it is, is fantastic. But you'll see this and, and great information. Um, again, ways you can help, you guys can join. Um, uh, you know, as, as a business or as an individual, um, you can volunteer, you can get this going in your state. Um, and I'd encourage you to come by the booth and, uh, and um, chat, us, you know, chat with us about it. I'm here the whole rest of the day, you guys. I, I mean, you know, right now, uh, you know, in, in my office, I'm super busy dealing with this issue. Life is basically going on as usual. Uh, you know, I'm well, my family's well, and my business is, uh, very, very, very busy, and, and I hope to keep it that way, um, you know, uh, serving the, you know, the families of California with this issue, and I would love to see that law go away, but I don't know. Um, uh, you know, eventually, uh, who knows, and, and, and your guys' involvement, I think, you know, number one, keep it from coming to your state. Number two, see if we can, you know, take back uh, California, all right? So thanks, you guys. Thanks.